In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural black veined marble material. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom node group so you can customize the material. So there is a scale value so you can make the material bigger or smaller on your object. Then there is a vein scale so you can just change the size of the veins. And then there's also a noise scale. Then there's three different colors. So color one is this default black color. Then there's color two, which is kind of like this gray color in the middle. And then there's color three, and this is the veins color. Then there's distortion value, so you can make the veins more distorted if you want to. Then there's also the veins visibility, so you can turn this up a little bit to see more of the veins, or turn it way down if you want them to be more subtle. And then we have the veins detail amount. And then we have also the veins distortion. And then we have the subsurface. So marble does allow a little bit of light to go through the material. So you can change the subsurface scattering right there. And then we have the roughness of the material. And then we also have the bump strength if you want the surface to be a little bit bumpy. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And you can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials and my ultimate material pack will also come with future updates when I make more materials. So once you set up the material pack as an asset library into Blender, then you can just drag and drop the materials into your 3D scenes. And I've also just released a procedural marble and granite material pack, which comes with all of these marble and granite materials. You can check out that material pack with the links in the description. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. The links are in the description. So if you want to set up the 3D scene the same way that I have, then I'll show you what I did. So I went to the Add menu, and I went to Mesh and added an Icosphere, and then right behind me on the Add Icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to 6, so it is nice and smooth and round, and I will use the Object Context menu and shade it smooth. Now the default objects in Blender are quite large, so I'm going to scale this object down to like a 0.2, and then I will apply the scale. Then I'm going to move this over here, and I'll go to the Add menu, and I'll add a cube, and I'm going to scale the cube way down, and I'll press Press Ctrl A and apply the scale, and I'll move the cube over. I can double tap the R key to do use the trackball rotation and just kind of rotate the cube. And then if I go into edit mode, I'll press Ctrl B. Then I'm gonna drag my mouse to make the bevel bigger, and I can use my scroll wheel to add more cuts to the bevel. So I'll just make a nice big smooth bevel like that. Go back to object mode and I'll shade this object smooth. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. And if you select the camera and then click over here to go to the object data properties, I turn the focal length to 80 just because it zooms the camera in a little bit and I like that better. Now as for the lighting, I added a few different area lights. So I added this large area light right here and I set the power to 120 and it's pointing down at the objects. And then I wanted to add a bit of a rim light and some reflections on the bottom. So I added this really big area light and this one I turned the power to 50. So we get some nice lighting. Now also to get some more realistic lighting and reflections, I went here to the world properties and I added in the Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have the link in the video description if you'd like to download it, and I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color, and you can choose environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then just a few more settings that I'm going to go over. I'm going to be using the Cycles rendering engine because I'm going for realism, so that's over here on the render properties. And also if you want to make the background transparent, you can open up the film tab and just click on the transparent button. So the HDRI will still light the scene, but it's not quite as is distracting and you can't see in the background. And then also here on the color management, I'm going to be using the View Transform of Filmic and I'll set the look to very high contrast to make the colors pop out and to make it more contrasted and saturated. So I am in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode. I'm just going to make this smaller. So we have a bit more space here and I'll make this side panel smaller. So I'll select one of the objects. Let's click on new to add a new material and I'll just rename this to black veined marble. And then I can select the other object and add the same black veined marble material. Now I'm also going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So you can click on Edit, you can go to the Preferences, and over here on the Add-ons tab, if you go to the Search and search for the Node Wrangler, just enable the Node Wrangler add-on so it's built in a Blender, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture, and we'll drop it here. Now to use the feature of the Node Wrangler, you can hold down the Control and Shift key and then select different nodes, and that's going to preview the node on the object. 
Now also with the Voronoi texture selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. So we're going to put the object into the vector of the mapping. And let's drag these down here. Then let's change some of the settings of this Voronoi. So I'm going to turn the scale up to a 10. And also right up here on this type, I'm going to change the feature output to distance to edge. And that way it's going to have those little cracks there. So the scale is going to be 10. The detail will turn up to 5 so it has a bit more detail. And the roughness will turn to a 0.84. And then I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now it does look really dark right now, but we are gonna make it lighter. Now what I wanna do is distort this texture to make it look a little bit more noisy and random. So I'm gonna to go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a mix color. We'll put the mix color between the mapping and the Voronoi. So what we're gonna do is mix the vector between the mapping and a noise texture. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. We'll drop this here. Let's drag these nodes back and I'm gonna bring the noise texture down here. Let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And I want to use the same object coordinates. So the vector of the mapping will go into the vector of the noise texture. And then let's change the settings. So I'll turn the scale to a 25. Let's also turn the detail all the way up to 15. And I'll turn the roughness up a little bit to a 0.65. So now this noise texture, the factor is going to go into color B. And the original mapping is going to go into color A of the mix. And then let's control shift and select the Voronoi texture preview it. Now on the mix type here, I'm going to change this to the linear light instead. So it is a little bit hard to see. I want to show you what this is doing, but it's kind of hard to see because it's a bit dark. So to make it lighter, let's drag these nodes back and I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a map range node to control the white values and dark values. So we'll put the map range here after the Voronoi. So let's drag it over here. So now what I can do is I can change this to a min value. You can see if I turn this up, it's gonna be a bit brighter. So I'm gonna turn this to min to just like 8.4, so it's a bit brighter. Now here on the two max, we can also turn this up to make it more contrasty. So this two max value, I'm gonna turn this up to a 90. So now you can definitely see that quite a bit better. You can see what it's doing. So now let's go back here to this linear light. So this mix node is mixing between the noise and the mapping. So if I drag the factor around, if I turn it to zero, it's just using the mapping. But if I turn it up more and more, it's going to use more and more of the noise. So it's being more distorted. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0 0.05. So it's just using a little bit of the noise texture. So that way it's distorting the Voronoi texture because it's going through the vector. And so now you can see that that original texture that we had kind of has a bit of noise and it looks a bit random. So that's going to look a lot better. Now I also want to make another Voronoi texture and it's going to be distorted the same way. So I'm going to select these two textures. I'll press Control Shift D to duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up. We'll drop them down here and I'm going to Control Shift and select this one here. So we now have another Voronoi and another map range and I want to change these settings to make the texture look a bit different. So I'm going to turn the scale to 12 and the roughness I'll just turn to like 8.8. .8. And then on the map range node here, we can use these values to make it lighter or darker. So I'm going to change these a little bit. So the two max, I'm going to turn this to an 85. And then the two min, I'm going to turn to a 0.54 but then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So I can hold down the control and shift key and select the different map ranges. And you can see we have two different textures now. So I wanna add some colors to both of these and we're gonna be mixing them together. So first on this bottom one here, I wanna make the colors. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a mix color. And we'll put this after the map range and the result is gonna go into the factor. So now I can make the two colors. So color B is gonna be fully black and then color A is gonna be kind of like a gray color. And if you want to use the same exact hex value I'm using for color A, the hex value is going to be 54524F. So those are going to be the first colors. So then I want to mix in the other Voronoi. So I'm going to drag these back so I have more space. I'll select the mix and I'll duplicate it and stick it right here. Now what we want to do is put the map range into the factor. And then this mix down here, this is going to go into color B. So if I now take color A and turn up the color, this is going to be the veins of the marble. So for color A, I'm going to make this a pretty light color. 
And the hex value for this color here on color A is going to be a hex value of six C's. So now if I zoom in closely, you can see we have some really detailed veins in the marble. Then we have a few little gray bits, but it is pretty subtle. And then of course there's the black. So let's take the mixed result and I can put that into the base color and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then here on the roughness, I'm going to turn this way down to a 0.16 so it is much more shiny. Now I also want to add a little bit of subsurface scattering, so let's open up the subsurface here, and I'm going to turn this weight up to a 0.5, because marble does allow a little bit of light to go through the material, so I just want to add a little bit of subsurface. And then I do want to add a little bit of surface bump, but I want it to be pretty subtle, so let's take the mix result, and I can put that into the normal, but then to convert the color data into bump data, or normal data, I'll go to the add menu, we're going to search for the bump node, and I'll stick it between the mix and the normal, and the mix result is going to go into the height value, so now it's being converted to bump data. But I want this very subtle, so I'll turn the strength down to a 0.02. So it is pretty subtle. So there's just a tiny bit of bump over the surface. And then there's just one more thing I forgot to do. So if I go to the Voronoi texture and go to the bottom Voronoi, I want to turn this detail value up to 15. And that way it's going to be more detailed. So if I zoom in there, you can kind of see that gray marble better. So if I control shift and select the mix there, now you can definitely see that that subtle gray marble has a lot more detail. So I'll control shift and select the principled shader and that is it for the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group so you can have customizable values. So I'll just click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. I'll press control G to join it together into a node group and then I'll hit the N key to open the side panel and I'll click here on the group tab and on the interface I'm going to double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to shader because I like that better. So I'll now hit the tab key to go outside of the node group and I'll drag the node group over here. Let's make it a bit bigger. And then I will copy the material name and I'll paste it here in the node group so that it's called black veined marble. So I'll hit the tab key to go into the node group and let's go over here and select the group input. And we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures, so the scale values will change the size of the entire material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket here, and if I click on the scale, right now it is three values, but I want it to be one value, so we'll click on the type here and we'll change it to float, so it is one value. Now the default value, I need to turn that to one, and then we'll go outside of the node group, and the scale here, I need to turn to one. So now this can control the entire size of the material. So we'll go back into the node group. Now I also want to control the vein scale, so we'll drag the group input up here, and this top Voronoi has a scale value, so let's put the scale into the extra socket, and if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename it to vein scale. Then let's drag the group input back here, and this noise texture has a scale as well, so I want to use that to change the noise scale, so we'll put the scale into the extra socket, let's rename this one here to noise scale. Then I want to control the colors, so I'll drag the group input right over here. And then I first want to take the black color, put that into the extra socket, then the gray color into the extra socket, and then also right here we'll put this into the extra socket, the last one. And let's rename these, so I'll rename them to color one, and then also color two. And then for the last one here, you could call it color three, but I'm actually going to rename it to veins color, because that's a bit more detailed, because it is controlling the color of the veins. Then I want to control the distortion, so I'll drag the group input back and this linear light here which is the mix color you can drag the factor to make the texture more distorted so I'll put the factor into the extra socket and I'll rename it to distortion then I want to control the visibility of the veins so if we go up here to this top Voronoi and the map range this map range value has the from max so if I drag this up and down that'll make it more or less visible so let's take the from max we'll put that into the extra socket and I'll rename this to veins visibility then I want to control the detail of the veins and so this noise texture here is distorting the Voronoi so you can see if I drag this up and down that is changing the detail of the veins so we'll put the detail into the extra socket and I'll rename that to veins detail and then let's also add this distortion value so I'll put the distortion into the extra socket and I'll rename this to veins distortion and then let's click on the group input and I'll drag it way over here and I want to control a few more things over here so I want to control the subsurface so I'll put the subsurface weight into the extra socket and I'm just going to rename it to subsurface or subsurface scattering whatever you want to call it and then I want to control the roughness value so I'll put the roughness into the extra socket and then finally we'll put the bump strength into the extra socket and I'll just rename this to bump strength. 
All right, so I'll drag the group input back down here. I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. Let's hit the N key to close that side panel. And there is the finished black veined marble material. So I'll just review the material. So we have the scale value, then we also just have the vein scale and we just have the noise scale. And then we have the different colors, so color one, and we also have color two, and then we also have the veins color. So this could actually look really cool if you make it maybe like a bright blue color or something like that, maybe even a red color. Red looks kind of cool, so you can really customize the material. Then we have the distortion value to make it more distorted or less distorted. We also have the veins visibility if you wanna see more of them, or you can turn it down to make it more subtle. We also have the veins detail and the distortion of the veins. And then we have the subsurface scattering. So it is, is a little bit hard to see on this material, but if you look kind of on the edges, there is a little bit of light going through the material. And then we have the roughness. So you can make it more like a polished marble or a less polished metal. So that'll change the roughness. And then finally the bump strength if you wanna make the surface a bit bumpy. So that'll wrap it up for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase this finished procedural material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. And I've also just released another material pack, which comes with all of these granite and marble materials, so if you're interested in purchasing that material pack, I'll have the links in the description. Or you can get access to all of my procedural materials by purchasing my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack which comes with all of my procedural materials plus future updates with more materials and all the materials are pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups so you can easily drag and drop the materials from the asset browser into your 3d scenes and then you can customize the materials using the node groups you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my materials, definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The links are all in the description. But I hope you found the video helpful, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.